to another running on air video. Before we get on with the CZ1 ring modulation, I thought it might be worthwhile looking at ring modulation in general. Let's look at what it is, what we can expect from it, and do a few experiments and see what sort of sounds you normally get from it. So um, let's get into the theory. So it's often said that ring modulation and amplitude modulation are essentially the same thing or very similar. And so what I wanted to do was really break down the difference between the two. So let's start with a basic waveform. Now on this one, we're looking at um, a scale of one volts, zero volts in the middle, and then minus one volts. Now we're gonna shape it using standard envelope shaper. And if we do that, then the envelope shaper may say start at zero volts and at zero volts, we get no sound. Um, but as it goes up into the positive up to one volt, then we get sound and then it gradually goes down until we get our release. And again, we're back to no sound. So take that a step further. Let's think of that now in terms of a second oscillator. The oscillator is working like the envelope shaper, except it's going to repeat. And this could be something like uh, an LFO doing tremolo. Yeah, so if we have a look at this then. So we have our carrier, which goes into the VCA, and then we have the modulator, which is changing the level of the carrier. The signal goes up, the level of the carrier goes up and when the modulator signal comes down again it hits zero but it keeps going and it goes into the minus territory. Now on a VCA that just means shut off. We're not going to make any sound, we're only going to make sound, we're only going to allow the signal through when we have a positive signal. Negative signals we just ignore. So with a ring modulator what happens is it's exactly the same as the VCA except that once it gets to zero, it keeps going and it starts letting the sound through again during that negative portion of the cycle. And if you look closely at the intersection between the first part and the second part, you can see what's happened is the sine wave has literally flipped direction. And in the second part, what you've got is an inversion of the first part. I'm going to have a go at sh uh, showing you how the amplitude modulation works. So I've just got a basic triangle wave and it's being modulated by another triangle wave very slowly. Speed it up a bit. Let's have a quick look at frequency side of things. So um, okay, so you can see that pulsing up and down. Now if I speed it up, something very interesting begins to happen. If you see at that point, oh, press another key. Um, you see at that point, that central frequency that we could be, see before has now split. Put it back and it's just pulsing. So it's one frequency going up and down, speed it up and it starts to split. And that's because the combination of the two frequencies, you get a plus and minus difference tone. So the central frequency plus the frequency of the modulator is the top one and the bottom one is minus the modulator. Now the other ones that you can see are going to be the harmonics where, where the same thing is happening. It's actually easier to see with the sine wave but unfortunately I couldn't do that. So let's speed it up more. Got them sort of in tune there. It's kind of interesting. And then it all 
goes out of tune again. Okay, now the thing that you'll notice is that at no point does that central 200 hertz signal disappear. That's always there. And that's the trademark of amplitude modulation. You always keep carrier waveform. Okay, I've set up this monologue to uh, show what happens with the ring modulation. And at the moment, I've got ring modulation off. Uh, this is VCO2. Um, and if I turn that off, VCO1. So they're both set to triangle. Uh, reason being, I want to cut down on the number of harmonics being used. Now it's actually VCO2 level which lets the ring modulation signal out. So it's all on this control. The two oscillators are modulated together and it doesn't really matter which one is the carrier and which one is the modulator. The effect is the same. So you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Okay, so the ring mod modulation is off. Now, if we have two frequencies which are the same when we ring modulate them, then we would expect to see the frequencies added together and subtracted from each other. So, frequency is 100 hertz. So if we ring modulate it, we'd expect to see 100 plus 100, which is 200, and 100 minus 100, which is zero. So, I'm going to turn the ring modulation on. And there we go, peak at 200 hertz. Got the harmonics there as well, so we expect those to be affected, but they should remain small. Um, now, if I move the pitch of VCO2 up, it would go from 100 hertz to 200 hertz. So, and so now we've got 100 plus 200 is 300, and 100 minus, sorry, 200 minus 100, which is 100, so we should see 100 and 300. And if I play the right notes, that is what you see. Move it up an octave again, and now we've got 400. So we've got 400 plus 100, 500, 400 minus 100, is 300. So 300 and 500. That's what I said, wasn't it? The actual original pitch of the note is gone. What we've got is related, but it's it's gone. Now, one of the options that we have here is that we can add VCO1 pitch back in. And then we've got the 100 hertz back. Now, if you remember from the theory, if you add the original carrier back in, then what you've got is amplitude modulation. But in many ways, that's probably more useful, isn't it? Because you've got the original note, plus you've got the extra effects of the ring modulation, and you can trim that down a bit as well. give colour and flavour. I'm going to look at the options on this a lot more when I do the CZ1 video, but it's interesting to see, and we'll see this on the CZ1, that in actual fact it does the same thing, it mixes back in the carrier with the ring modulation, so you keep the original source note. But at least you've got the choice on the monologue. So, um, across the typical ring modulation sounds, change the pitch. Sci-fi radio. 